I was older, but I was politically younger than them. Because they were all politically experienced men. Basil and father promised, made me promise him that I would not look for them. But I said, I didn't look fairly here. There was a hope for me. But I took it upon myself as we created this special bond as we sought to serve our country and this nation. Fenton was an engineer, and he always bragged on the fact that engineers were smarter than doctors and lawyers. In fact, he said, we can do without the lawyers, but we cannot do without the engineers. Fenton also said one of his favorite lines was that, enemies stab you in the back, and friends stab you in the chest. He was like a time next watch. He took a look in and he kept on ticking. When the good people of South Beach decided they didn't want him anymore, and he was delighted when Mr. Ingram encouraged him to consider his own, and despite that, Charlie and I said, boy, don't fool with that. But he wanted to return home to Zoma because he loved Zoma so much, the place of his childhood. In fact, Benton installed a Pompeii statue in Zoma. And we all went down to Zoma for this commissioning of this statue. And lo and behold, as you know, Pompeii was the slave that, 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 that uh, uh, ran away. Benton had the statue prepared showing his paternity sign. <laughs> now, Charlie kept his mouth shut. But I said to Benton, it wasn't no paternity round. It was a company going with a serious like that. Folks, Benton also claimed to be a cop. And so we used to bribe the who could prepare the best work. So two down one time when you were away, he came to our home. He came into my kitchen and pushed me out of the way. And he took over the kitchen. And he prepared the grill. Well, all I can say, that was the first and last time family stayed in my kitchen from there my grill. We served in the South. If you didn't find us out our constituency office, well, you can find us at the water and home. I had an but back then we did a treat. But what is most important for me is the friendship that I had with Benson. And I am so appreciative to his family. For you all have been loaning to us. Benton was the man who could have been king. He had the intelligence, he had the heart for people. And he was a visionary. But he got thrown under the political bus. He sent him to his home. And all of us got sent him. He wanted, he wanted to run in 2012. Uh, but you know, we got on the wrong team. We got on the wrong team. And that was such a happy occasion for them. 
you tell he loved you and I'm so thankful for the years that he was able to spend with you. I gave my cash into the oil. When I was in Europe, I was in Europe. When I was in Japan, I was in Japan. When I was in South America, I was in South America. And Fenton was just such a wonderful person. And we are thankful for his life. We are thankful as a nation for what this man could have been in with us. Love this party. Again, I told him what I had to jump ship. But he would have nothing of that. <laughs> so I couldn't tell him that I decided to jump ship. But Fenton would often say, you know, you fellas ain't loyal. But he was loyal to them. He believed in his party. He believed in his leadership. He believed in Mr. Ingram who he followed. And I believe that there's some great reunion going on. I believe the late Lyndon Oscar Pilling is there. I believe, I believe Charlie is there. I believe Dr. Lawrence is there. Roy, although I'd like to be a fly on the wall, I didn't know how to train. <laughs> but I believe that there is a great debate going on. As I talk about how best to move this country forward. See, Fenton was a child born in the 60s. And being a child of the 60s, he represented what was supposed to be the best of us as a new Bahamas. And he surely did that. He was intelligent, he was athletic, a boy that speaking voice. Uh, radio announced his voice to die for him. And he had a good heart. And he meant well to his country. The last time I saw Fenton alive was on um, July 19, as I sat by his bedside. Now, must we saying this? Fenton kept his Bible open to Psalm 34 and 35. But that didn't surprise me. What did surprise me, for the first time and all the times I've been visiting him, that not to read the Bible to him. And so I read the Bible to Fenton. And it should uh, come to my mind that despite all that my friend had gone through, there was a man who had gone through at least three or so remissions of cancer, uh, several several votes of radiation and chemotherapy, reconstructive surgery, but he was a fighter. And I asked Fenton, what's next? Well, Fenton says, no Moody, in that harsh face voice, all I want to do is the work of the Lord. And I said to Fenton, the work of the Lord, and I said to myself, you've done the work of the Lord. And so to all your newly minted cabinet colleagues, there's a message to be had. Those of us who seek to go into politics, we ought to be about the work of the Lord. It's about doing that which is right for God's people. My brother Clinton, take your rest. You will never be forgotten. Say hi to Charlie. God bless you.
Your Excellency the Most Honorable Dame Margaret Finley, Most Honorable Prime Ministers, Honorable Acting Prime Minister, Members of the Executive, Parliamentarians, the Judiciary, Senior Civil Servants, Clergy, Family, Friends, and more importantly, the Kings and Queens of this great Commonwealth that my brother so adored. At Fenton's behest, our family offers salutations and sincerest gratitude to the many well wishes, including those of you that would have graced us with your presence today in this house of worship to celebrate St. Fenton's brief 53 years in this realm. There are some notables that Fenton has directed me to offer open appreciation. Mom, that name was ascribed to you by Fenton. I know that we're not really British, but there's nothing more befitting and nothing more important than being Fenton Nemo's mom. You were there for him from the womb to the chariot. It is evident that God answered your common refrain, Lord, give me strength. So in response, the Lord gave you Fenton. <laughs> Fenton loved you dearly. He knows that he may not have said it enough. The song which he dedicated to you at his wedding said it all. That song was entitled, If This World Were Mine. Notwithstanding that Fenton has now gone global and beyond, he will always be by your side. To tell, sis, your Fenton's infinite galaxy, your being part of his life gave it even more meaning and purpose enabling him to enjoy his time here. With you, he certainly live, love, and laugh. Often my wife Claire and I are amazed at your balance and voice. The marital vows could not have been more of an accurate reflection of your relationship with Fenton. You took his breath away every day. Even when he had one last breath to give, he gave that to you. Thank you for being a safe haven in the treacherous storm. To his children, Ashley, Jonathan, Kaylon, and Tiara. Your father lived his life in the public's eye for most of your lives. His service was in the pursuit of building the best Bahamas for you as well for all of the populace. His love and commitment to you and your well-being is indisputable. As with most children, you kept him grounded in reality and he valued your real life perspectives. Your father's earthly absence means that you also have a responsibility to honor his ideals and to live beyond his expectations. So govern yourselves accordingly. Out of all of Fenton's accomplishments, you are his greatest. Renato, Brian, and Bradley his brothers. Fenton began planning a boat expedition for us, including Glenn, to travel the entire archipelago. The trip was scheduled for this forthcoming birthday, September 3rd. He broached the proposal to me while I was watching Shark Week, so the prospect of me being Shark Bay gave me pause. Despite my personal trepidation, he consoled me, reminding me that he was a worthy air and sea captain. Indeed, he was. We placated him with his plans, but I suspect that he knew that he would start his own journey. Fenton was part of all of his brothers. He expects us to do the impossible, and that's try and become greater than he was. He has requested that we be a source of support for his wife and children. He particularly wanted us to be more diligent in looking after mom and Paul. To his respective step-parents, Bruno Lamberger and Paula Sears Nemo, Fenton and I experienced life in a special kind of blended family. Not quite mixed up like Tom Salad, 
With Bruno, we had the benefit from the Swiss language. Bruno Fenton respected your intellect and enjoyed the lively debates. He wanted you to know that because you mattered to mom, you mattered to him. Paula, because of you, Fenton and I are exposed to the softer and more patient side of our dad. Fenton fed off your strength as you continue to fight your own battles. He will look over you and hold us to account if we fail to do the same. Uncles Harry, Willis, Kendall, Derek, Saab, Freddie, and in particular, Uncle Ken, who Fenton considered more of a father than an uncle. Ken Fenton was particularly grateful for your insistence that he exhaust all humanly possible options in order to prevail. You all taught him how to be dynamic and how to be determined. You taught him how to fly freely in more ways than one. Fenton thanks you for not only making him a man, but making him a great exoner. Answer the Reverend John Bisner, Faye, Sadie, Al, Julie, Nadine, Gandhi, and Lois, who all open up your home and hearts to Fenton. And his unwavering tower support, Hilary, who was there for him throughout it all. Fenton thanks all of his aunts for being the part time mom and the sisters that he always wanted. You all taught him how to be resilient, respectful, and how to be strong, and how to be a gentleman that he was. To the Makula Noah's family, you welcomed and received Fenton with wide open arms as part of your family. Fenton beamed with pride to receive your embrace. He really enjoyed his time with you. He often said to me he not only got to watch Law and Order on the beach in Exuma, but because of you, he also did it in Alco and Illusor. Fenton appreciated your spirit and your gift in sharing QTEL with him. Particular thanks are expressed to his sister and brother-in-law, Michelle and Roberta Smith, for sharing your home with Fenton when he had those horrid chemotherapy sessions in Florida. To Uncle Samuel McIntosh, for supplying Fenton with support and also for supplying him with his reliable stock of fish and for taking him on his very last boating journey. To Shannon Lee for your kind assistance and patience with Fenton while he was confirmed. To the most honorable Hubert Ingram, sir, your visits with Fenton while in hospital was uplifting to him. You were mentor, conciliatory, and hero to my brother. Fenton and I was in Freeport at success's bedside when we witnessed firsthand the passage of the baton to you to the, the FNM. So it certainly was Providence when Fenton joined the party with you firmly at the helm. Being a cabinet minister to Fenton was only appealing and worth the while because he was part of the Hubert Ingram cabinet. So thank you immensely for giving him an opportunity to render national service, thereby making him a part of our country's history. But more so, thank you for being a part of his life. To the Wallace Whitfield family, Successor and our dad lived like brothers. So we lived like family. Time and geography may have separated us, but God always finds a way to give us another glimpse. Vincy, Kenny, Paul, Pookie, he told me to remind her name's Merle. Joey, Justina, Jeffrey, and Robert, thank you for sharing your father, who in turn shared his wisdom and introduced Fenton to that little light. That little light which ignited the fire, that FNM fire, deep inside of his soul. Incidentally, Joey, his son, had the good sense to marry our cousin, Christine Bo. So we became family all over again. To Joey and Christine, we owe you a sincere debt of gratitude. To the Free National Movement, our dad was a founding member of the Free PLP, thereafter formulated into the Free National Movement. In spite of Fenton's political orientation, answering to his own drum, he conducted his own explorations, all leading right back to you, the FNM. He enjoyed his political life with you, and as the case may exist within any family, he met with his challenges. He suggested I use that particular word, challenges. Apparently he used that phrase, he quite a lot. 
So to quell the pundits and idle mind, and please be duly advised that my brother ain't Bahamas there. Given his current flight plan, he has absolutely no need to carry any baggage. Well, of modest or regrets, Fenton Nemo remains steadfast in ideals and vision of the free national movement, and although his path with the Lord is iridescently lit, the FNM torch remains ever in his grasp. So I stand here today as a surrogate to assure you that Fenton will not only be affording oversight from above, more importantly, in short order, he will be dispatching to you the helping hand. To the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, without getting into the semantics and acknowledging that there is a distinct difference between a government and a political organization, covering all bases, sincere appreciation is also extended to the most honorable Prime Minister, Hubert Minnis, and to the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas for all that you've done. Moreover, thank you in advance all that you will do, should do, and must do. <laughs> the progressive liberal body, Fenton came to comprehend that because you sat as a side opposite, you were not necessarily opposed to him or his efforts, and vice versa. Fenton wanted you to know that while his loyalty lied elsewhere, the PLP was never his foe. I suspect that you understood the manner of his bearing. and also appreciated exactly what it meant. Fenton accepted that politics is a contact sport where you get your bumps and bruises. He built a respectful camaraderie with many members of the opposition, in particular the Honorable D.J. Nottage, his compatriot, whom has since pre predeceased him. To the former and current leadership and membership, mainly, namely the Most Honorable Perry Christie, Honorables Philip Brave Davis, Chester Cooper, Glenn Hanna, Paisville Forbes, and Senator the Honorable Frederick Mitchell, thank you. Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. To you, Fenton exclaims, Go Ma. Fenton's moniker while in the pledge line was Lone Quiescent Warrior. There's so much irony in that assignment. I may be Fenton's paternal brother, but the Sigmas are on a different plateau. And I beg your pardon, your pardon for the departure of the Quran here. While I'm minded to conclude that my level of brotherhood is much higher, I will not hazard any tests of the bond that he built with Blue Fight. <laughs> They're supposed to say no, I didn't hear it loud enough. Blue Fight! You know! <laughs> Fenton became a signal because of your ideology and commitment to community and service. He knows that you and the other sister and brother partner that get him at organizations will continue to champion the cause. Sigmas, we want to thank you not only for carrying Fenton into the church today, but also for carrying him in life. Archdeacon Father Palacios, you've officiated all of the pivotal aspects of Fenton and Tutel's journey. Thank you for being more than clergy and in many instances being more than family. May God continue his blessings upon you and Reverend Palacios. Doctors Belverton Moxie, Delton Farkerson, Theodore Turnquist, Darius and Waller, respectfully, respectively, and nurturing Doctors Hospital, especially the fourth floor. You are a clear testament of the professionalism and commitment which confirms the impressive scale of competence which exists within this great nation. We can recall when Fenton was at the brink because of what, you, what may have occurred while obtaining treatment abroad. You restored him and brought him back to us, ready to fight the next round and the next round after that. Thank you. Glenn LaBelle, as we say, my brother,